Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of, well, Star Wars. I mean, that's, that's why we're here. That's what we're playing. It's what we love to do. It was our very first show. It's one of our big hit shows, comparatively speaking to numbers of, that are running with our other shows. It is our show that is mostly supported by our patrons and cast members. It is our show that we decided to be a little different. In case you've forgotten, in case you're not familiar with the origins of this show, we were trying to launch a Pathfinder show and kept having trouble. And after a year in, we put it down and the movie Rogue One came out. And we were just like, yes, classic Star Wars reminded us how cool it is. And we went back to Saga Edition, not the current FFG Dice Pool Edition. We went back to Saga Edition. And yes, we heard it's broken. And yes, but it provides a campaign that was written for the game system called the Dawn of Defiance campaign, where heroes could start characters at first level three months after Order 66 and end up doing some Black Ops network and wet work for Bail Organa 19 years before Han shot Guido and before the rebellion was actually birthed itself. And hence the name We shot first welcome back to season four book four echoes of the jedi when last we left our heroes they had landed on the planet elmas a remote planet surrounded by an asteroid not easy to get to on the space lanes they had defeated pirates and gained their colossal i want to say corellian cruiser but that's leia's ship a consular class cruiser very cool i'd like to th think that as much as you guys are impressed by 960 hit points that the ship has remember the very first scene in episode one where the two Jedi land on the space station, and the first thing they do is they take two turbo lasers and they just nuke the nice big red ship with three engines on the back, gone. No ship is a tire fortress. Nothing is impenetrable. And this technological marvel of your new ship is insignificant next to the power of the dark side, Aiden, of the Force. I don't know, in this ah. system... The dark side powers are kind of underrated past the first couple levels. Like, the, they're really front-loaded to tempt you, but at this point, eh, they don't scale. But you have been reading them. You are interested well, in, the, of course. in the power they offer. Well, that's enough for me for now. Which brings... Well, that's not being interested. That's just trying to understand. Which brings us to our yet... Stupid nothing. <laughs> brings us to our young Jedi, who, as we happen upon a scene in a like what, what do we want to call this a desolate dark side dominated uh dead grassy rubbled ruins of an academy some two well-known oh actually galactic lore all around sorry we, we plugged our scene last time we need galactic lore rolls if you please Galactic War. Uh, 10 untrained. 13 untrained. That would be a 19 trained. 19 untrained. Right away, uh, one of the first thing you guys realize that's going on here is the fact that uh, you're dealing with two well-known scavenger races. First of all, the five little blue guys with tufts of hair, the furry, are called squibs. And they are known to be savvy little deal-making scavengers. These guys will try to sell you a bucket of air and keep the bucket after they sell it to you. The Ugar are an amoeba-based race that pour themselves into clothes or just form up hands and feet because they're a big blob. Um, make lots of pseudopods and tentacles and stuff so that they can walk around and interact with humanoid races such as yourself. And they have a very strange um, sort of religious view, spiritual view of galaxy and their claim on salvage within it. That's all I can give you with those rules. And right now, one of these agars are calling out to you guys because somebody spotted you. And they're demanding that you tell 
their uh, competition that they're in the middle of a tug of war with with a perfectly polite droid may i ask okay half a droid the top half of your classic silver protocol droid but not the one that looks like cp through 3po i believe this one is the one that has the bug eyes and the slight um snout those protocol droids mostly humanoid and it's not like a total bug head but you know what i mean they have the large black eyes and the, the cutoff cone. Yeah, one of the ones that was getting tortured on uh, Jabba's little skiff thingy. Yep. Uh, also, there's one that just made a recent appearance on Bad Batch that uh, was the senator's right hand kind of thing. Uh, one of those. But a protocol Master, droid. would you like me to clear the plaza? Unnecessary for now. <sighs> um... Luckily, they're still arguing and didn't overhear that. They do know you guys are armed, and these guys are carrying, you know, whatever and weapons, but they're not, they don't have guns trained on each other. They're just arguing. And our young Jedi has stepped up and asked, you know, sort of, would someone explain what is going on? So, while the Jedi, formerly known as Poser, is up front about to get into some diplomacy, persuasion, force powers, who knows? In the back, we're having a quiet conversation between Droid and Master about shooting everyone. Yeah. You know, droids can get DP too. I know you're behind in, in the show and stuff, and I've got a tally of DP if you want to catch up. I mean, there's lots of aliens to go around, you know, just uh, slaughtering innocents is, if it's how you guys want to roll and, and uh, you know, add your own personal taste and slant to the campaign. Doug, I say go for it. But right now, my master said no. Okay. What's for Hall doing? He's watching the young Jedi at work. All right, well, he's taking the initiative here. See what uh, you know. See if you've rubbed off yeah. on him, right? Yeah, exactly. You do notice, and 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 being familiar with the salvage laws of the galaxy, I'm just going to see. You know, it's a little uh, knowledge test for the uh, Jedi, formerly known as Poser. <laughs> well, it's kind of like this: finders keepers. It's mine. No, it's mine now. After the proverbial blaster shot. So it's, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere. No one cares. But these guys seem to be civil. I mean, like, they're arguing. They're not shooting each other. So, uh, if you guys are all happy to spectate, then Poser, what do you want to do? You demand to know what's going on, and everyone starts talking at once. I, I will, you know, I'll do, like, a conductor cutoff, you know, Okay, quiet. One at a time, starting with you. And I'll point to one of the little furry ones. One of the squibs. Okay. The, uh, let's say, largest squib. Uh, closest to you, by chance. Okay. Steps forward and introduces himself. Me and my boys, I be Jim Melandio Baremarist, or Jimmy. He seems proud that they, some, somebody's called him that, and it's, you know, shorter. Feisty little squib, but he's got a death grip on the droid's right arm, and his furry compatriots are all, like, some are wrapped around his belt and spread out to see if the other guys try something and, like, hold them off, almost like blocking on a rugby team kind of thing going on. Anyway, not even loosening his grip. He just head turns and just proudly starts introducing himself. Blah, 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 blah. This is me. We work for the Squib Salvager, Scree. And I found this treasure near the temple entrance. And he and he just kind of nods with his head and one ear. It's almost like his ears become his hands because, like I said, he's not letting go of this droid. So it's almost like his little ears start fluffing and tuffing as if he was gesturing with fingers. Possession okay. is nine one hundredths and ninety nine one thousandths of Squibian law. So, Spearmuck... Set the droid down, he says, insulting, you know, his um, competition. It's fair game. And he just goes back into his tugging like, you know, that's he, he, he's quoted their laws, his boss, and a bunch of gobbledygook, and they're just prattling on, and apparently that's it. He goes okay. back to just pulling. All right. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay, and now uh, you? I'll gesture towards the... You know, the agar that's holding the droid? The big guy? Yep. Um, 
Spearmuck is not an insult, as you first thought. He actually introduces himself. I am Spearmuck, and Ergen Divine Law decrees that the first being to find a piece of junk consecrates it with his slime on contact. And you see the tentacles just tighten their grip, and it's almost like he's squeezing a sponge of himself, and ooze kind of slides up and down the droid arm and body that he has a hold of. Just a little bit more. Kind of gross. And thus mark our ownership instantly and indefiable and respected by all and any other Earthgar. So is our divine, and his eyes just all like to the sky, you know, laws. (laughs) (laughs) Praise the salvage, praise the junk. (laughs) We we used to have a religion that was like praise the sun, but we couldn't get near it and take it and sell it. So we got into junk. Fair enough. Okay. Now. I understand both of your laws. Uh, excuse me, as well as- says the droid. Do I not have a say in this? His head swivels like left and right and back at you. I was actually just about to get to you. I was about to ask how they feel, you know, how their laws are about sentient beings, because you seem very much alive. He nods curtly. I am 7-A39. 7-A for short. And I am indeed nice sentient switch. and do not appreciate due to my lack of mobility. And there's like wires sparking at the bottom of the prototype, you know, that yeah. these two species are taking, shall we say, swivel head, swivel head, advantage of my dilemma. I can see that. I Let's am. Let's try and help you out of that. I was once a proper positioned protocol droid to a Jedi Master at this very academy before it fell to ruins. I must say, this behavior is irregular and should not stand by the Republic Galactic laws. Nod, nod, nod. Well, things are a bit different now. That'll be explained to you in a bit. Uh, Let's get you out of that situation before we delve too much into stories and whatnot. Anywho, so, uh, Spearmark and Jimmy, how do your races feel about slavery and, you know, taking possession of a sentient being? So that's what this is. They both look at it, and they both start talking at the same time. Jimmy's like, this is not a person. This is a machine that is, you know, built to act like a person, full of data. This is not a sentient and the Ogar is like this um, divine piece of salvage has been preordained to be built by another race to serve it and by our divine laws since it was not born into this world under our right it is not considered a person it is a machine or property and he actually like nods one little eye at the little guy using his words and the guy looks at him jimmy looks at him and nods like okay well thanks for that both seem to think it is not alive and hence tug war continues uh i'll turn around to rahal kind of give him an eyebrow raise so well uh, master what do you think master all right. You got the silver tongue. Listen, listen. Uh, I understand your positions here, but uh, this ain't salvage. This property was claimed long before any of you showed up by the Jedi Council. And uh, it just so happens one of the representatives has uh, shown up to start claiming uh, what's been lost. So unless you want to, uh, you know, Meet the hot end of a lightsaber. You should probably give it back to him. And I will apply my persuasive 
Sounds like intimidate through persuasion. Do you have any talents and stuff to back this up? Oh, uh, you know, well, actually, no. before you bring the hammer down, um, w was this all from you, Aiden? Are you just talking them through it, or are you using any of your... Because you haven't asked anything of them. You just got them chatted out amongst themselves. Are you using any powers or any talents or any persuasion of your own to, like... Because even persuading them to calm down and talk it out and come to their own agreement technically is your influence, so... Yeah. Or are you um, just happy just to see what they had to say first? I mean, I was mainly wanting to see what they said and then, you know, try to convince them that it is sentient, but also, you know, let's see what Rahal thinks and then kind of handle the situation from here. Hmm. Yeah, so, so. Um, Intimidate just runs off Persuasion. There is no actual Intimidate skill. Oh, yeah, no, I was just saying that, like, it, it comes into Persuasion, but it's like an, your angle is Intimidation. Through persuasion. Yep. Sorry, yeah. Yep. No, I wasn't looking for the other scale. I, yeah. So. And do you have any... Silver, <laughs> silver tongue, go. 25. Okay. Uh, they take pause at your words, seem a little nervous, and start looking around for this, you know, Jedi that you just mentioned, because, of course, these guys are looking for your full brown-robed, you know, already glowing lightsaber going, I've come! You know, right? So... They, I'll, I'll just kind of <laughs> give them a little wave and a head nod. Hello. Master, what is a Jedi? There's no Jedi here. Is he coming soon? Well, we are, we'd be oh. willing to buy it off him. Well. Uh, I'm the Jedi. Well, not buy it off him. It's still ours by claim. I mean, we'd be willing to sell it to him. You know, uh, finder's fee. You're a Jedi? Well, they they clearly aren't listening, so I will grab one of the cylinders on my hip. And hold it out. Okay. Is this enough proof, or do you need me to actually light it up? <laughs> they laugh. We got one of those. One nudges another, and they actually produce a lightsaber. And they click it, and it fizzles. It's obviously broken. But they know what it is. Not so hard to find. It doesn't make you a Jedi. Uh, you're right. Uh, this does. And I will use a move object to lift up a rock. Oh, so you don't light up? <laughs> oh, no. I'll. Well, they, they're already saying that they have a lightsaber. Like, yeah, I, I guess it, you'd have a working one. There'd be some oohs and ahs, but that doesn't tell you. So, okay. Yeah. So, that's way to show a Jedi. Force powers. Uh, so yeah, I will lift up a boulder. Okay. And, may, and you know, do the exact opposite of how I've been doing the past six months. Big grandstanding with it. I'm rehauling this. <laughs> okay. You, you know, just mm, <laughs> step, <laughs> step, step, <laughs> step, <laughs> step, 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 if It's exactly how Rahal uh, uses the force. <laughs> if, if I may, so... Po uh, for uh, TXS's benefit, okay. The young man steps forward, <laughs> smooths the polyesters, and then gets into all these grand gestures of like, "Where's the beach?" and all that stuff, right? And then, and then you know, the rock lifts. You know, one one squib gets down and like runs his hand under it, like looking for hydraulics or whatever, and they they kind of ooh and ah, right. So, indeed, says the droid, you are a Jedi. Are you perhaps acquainted with my master, Jedi Master Lannis? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. There's, There's been a lot that's happened. But... So, by your own words, you're not the Jedi that owns th this droid, because he says he's owned by a Lannis guy, and you don't even know him? Oh. Well, with all due respect, Master Jedi, and they kind of like back off from you and your rock and go back to tugging war on the droid. However, any like bunch of them now are watching you very closely to see what you do. And you even see, I'm not saying they're nervous they got a hand on a gun, but their, you know, their body language is certainly gone from don't care to very cautious. Right. But so these I, little fanatics I, are still on about this droid. <laughs> I'll set 
the rock down. Okay. You know, I don't want them to be threatened by it. Okay. Be like, look. I will aim one weapon at each boss. Oh, <laughs> oh easy. Hey, 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 guys, calm down. Calm down. It's okay. Right. They're going to speak the international language. Somebody said something about credits. Uh, how much you want for the droid? How much you got? <laughs> you must think I'm new. <laughs> that ain't how it works. I'll make you an offer. I'll give you three credits. But let's be realistic. You know what you want. And I'm assuming you're probably going to have to split it with the uh, squid ice there. Three? He holds up three fingers. And then he turns them sideways to make a K. Three thousand credits. I don't know. That's a bit rich. You guys got anything else you can do to sweet? You got anything else on you could sweeten the deal? What else did you find out here? Hmm. They do have a lightsaber. Okay, they start hawking up, man. Like the 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 Ogars that asked for three, right? Uh, someone's waving a clone trooper belt full of stuff. Uh, someone holds up a spray stick, uh, and um, another one steps forward, and he's got like this chest, and they're like suddenly debating if they should show you this thing that seems very precious to them in a box before they open it. You know, Monty, you don't get to know what's in the box, but you might be able to risk all for it. Sorry, uh, Poser, what are you doing there? Oh, uh, I was gonna kind of whisper under my breath to Rahal. They do also have the lightsaber. We could probably repair that. Uh, the other guys, yeah, the squibs. He's talking to the Uggars right now. Oh, I thought he was talking to both. No. No, like, the, the Uggars are like, you know, the squibs mentioned money, but the Rahal said, hey guys, you'll take money, and the Uggars said, uh, how much you got? And he went three, and they went, well, 3K, right? 3,000. So the Amoeba guys are like, well, we got this, this, and, you know, okay, cool. Okay, we'll make it worth the three grand. So obviously they're willing to come down, or since they really want the three grand, they start offering extra stuff to make, you know, sweeten this deal, right? Um, however, the other guys follow suit. Well, uh, <laughs> they start, you know. Um, Jimmy points at your breath masks. Any of those you can spare. And you notice that the little squibs are not wearing breath masks. I don't think we have any we can spare. Uh, do we have one of the biohazard suits we can spare? Wouldn't fit these guys. They're they're tiny. Well, I could do the uh, you know kids sneaking into the movie theater. They could jury rig. Stack up in the <laughs> yeah. We could. I bet one of them has rig. a jury rig. I, and... I will tell you this: they will take the whole suit as if it were a breath mask, and you're like, you, you guys are salvagers. You know, fix it, pull the parts, and make something happen. Right? They would accept that because you're paying more because the suit's worth more, and but they've got to do the labor to rip it apart and make it functional for what their needs. So that would be a fair trade as a, as opposed to. So yeah, they'll take a couple suits. Do we have a couple suits? That's what I was asking. You walked off with, you asked for like four? At least four. I think it was four. I think I think they had five and I took four. I think we had like, I think we had like six or eight and you're like, I'm taking Because the four. guy like wanted one for himself or something. Yeah, I think he... we didn't want to give, give any of them. I think it was, he was focused on his ship and you guys were all like, thank you, bye. Right? That's, you know, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. No take back season. He ran off with it. Convinces um, that... Um, the quartermaster guy. The guy that never talks with the data pads, always making faces at you, whatever you like gas and stuff, right? Yeah. Go to him and like, hey, so and so said this, right? Yep, cut back to the resurgence where um, you know, they, they want to do some auxiliary maintenance on the hull and the the tech crew go down there and they're like, Hey, where's my suit? Right. I don't So who's where so my question still stands. Who who's wearing the suit? Obviously not the droid. Um you've got a breath mask, Aiden? Uh no, I'm wearing a suit. You, okay, yeah. So, and and I'm assuming you've got a suit on too, Doctor Leth. That would be the most prudent. So we have one extra suit. Correct. Yeah, we'll trade a suit. Okay. Um. They huddle and talk about it, and they're like, "Since you only got one, which in the end is only like one breath mass for one of them." Okay. 
they'll give up their half claim, you know, on it. And the Ugrux will give up their half claim on it for, you know, 3,000 creds and a bunch of their stuff. Yes? Okay. Okay. So one of the Ugrux come forward and they present you with a data pad to make the transfer. Yep. Okay. Um, now, funny enough, a little data funny pad, enough, like a little there's no cap. there's no Rogers cable out here. Like we're in some broken down world. Like there's no hollow net here, right? Okay. These guys, one guy takes off a backpack, pulls. You know, you got like the duct tape freaking satellite dish or whatever. Gets a signal, right? Tells another guy to hit it, and one guy just starts wiggling, making static like mad, juicing this thing up, and then they like plug in their data pad and hold it out to you. Like go, make transfer. Go now. We will yep. pray. You know, go, go. Tap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you get tap. It, it transfers. They look, they check it, they verify it. It's legit. You do have 3K to spare. Yep. Take it off your dude. And Duff. you are now the proud owner of a clone trooper utility belt that has a med pack and synth rope. Ooh. Uh, knowledge technology, boys and girls, as this stuff is passed through the line. Knowledge technology. Poser already knows what Synthrope is. He has some of his own. Oh no, like something. Well. The the stick, actually. Oh. Nope. Anyone? Knowledge, knowledge. Uh, 29. Ooh, Escalath. A Stockley spray stick. There's a rare toy. What does it do? I don't know. I gotta look it up. Alien pepper spray. <laughs> <laughs> Alien pepper spray. It's oh, it's great. It's like a net. You can make space them space. and freeze foes. Stock, stockly spray slow stick. Them down. You know what this is? Awesome. Yeah. S T O K H L I. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Always a pleasure. And they're still debating about the box. A little persuasion. Because they're like, the deal's gone down. And like the, the one guy's like, no, we really shouldn't give this up, boss. It's, you know, it's the. Whisper, whisper. Come on, show us what's in the box. They show you a strange, uh, it looks like a cube with a sphere attached to it. So it's almost like a, a miniature half a droid, like the astromech kind of thing. And has panels on it and different colors. And they claim it's a holy holocron. Uh, can I? Tap into the force and no, you can't. Static. You're right. No. Ooh, holy holocron. You're right. Sounds like a fake to me, but uh, you know what? We'll take it too. Come on. Hmm. You guys seem interested in the holocron. You want to add to the deal? They want five grand to throw this in or and they start looking you over and they start pointing out like or your pinstripe <laughs> suit or and like obviously really precious one of a kind things on you guys little amoeba eyeball guys are really prudent and they're like they start asking for very precious things from you guys to give up their holy holocrand or 5k I got it but that's going to tap me out pretty much Anybody got money? Hey, Rich J. Um, are we <laughs> close enough that I could like if it it looks like it's would be made out of like metal components or something, right? Yeah, you want to like lean in to ask to expect it. Yeah. Uh, yes. They'll let you inspect it. They just won't let you like pick it up and run off or like jab it or you know what I mean. But you have a good close look. Sure. Knowledge technology. Sure. Um. And then I will add a force point to that. Okay. For a 22. Mm. I mean, it does have components for data. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not just... Uh, it ha does have metal components and storage. You know what I mean? Mm. But it could hold data. But whether, like, your knowledge of, like, Jedi actual... Hologram... Mm, not sure. You're kind of on the fence. Like, what you know with the 22 technology is, is like, this is either a really good fake with actual functioning, you know, to, like, lean that way, going, look, it works. It's a, you know, 
um, or like even a Fabergé egg fake is made from real gems and blah blah blah. It just wasn't made from you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, type of thing. So this is either a really good fake or the real deal. That I, that I can give you, but well, my limited knowledge on holocrons, specifically Jedi holocron, um, it certainly could contain data, but without any evidence as to its authenticity, as far as being Jedi holocron, or even as you so right as you place as you describe it wholly. Uh, what about a resident Jedi? You want to have a go? Uh, t- Knowledge tech? I'd... Untrained, sure. Okay. How about uh, galactic lore? Uh, also untrained. How? Ab- sure. Okay. Well, because you're an actual Jedi, I will say that it does have the classic Jedi motif. Now, a okay. hundred different species of Jedi have a lot of alteration to their decoration, but it is an actual one base of a tradition that may have these shapes are congruent to the force. And you know what I mean? So it has that right. um, cut and style to it. You know what I mean? I mean, even right. if it's not a holocron, this is a Jedi made item, even if it's just yeah. a data cube. You know what I mean? But So Rahal's going to, you know, reach into his space suit okay. and pull out his electro binoculars kind of toss them up into the air how about this we'll throw in this and another thousand creds if you throw that in have a gander at this okay what do you got electro binoculars okay <laughs> they all pull some out of their pack they know what they know what it is at sight with it sorry sure. yeah like- There's, it's still worth a thousand creds well, like I said, they want a total. Like they don't want. Sorry, maybe I misspoke. They don't want five on top of the three you just paid. They want you to up to five. Oh, up to five. So oh, another two. Sold. Another two. Sold. Sold. Uh, I thought you were asking for another five. No. Yeah. Okay. Sold. I'll I'll do that. Done. Done deal. Okay. Fire up your wiggly data pad okay. transmitter. Okay. So please uh, take uh, five additional two off your dude. Just chipping away at those credits. Yeah. And offering dark side points to our Jedi. That's the GM's delight and job. Drain the rich guy <laughs> and infuse the Jedi with power. It's my job, man. It's my job. Temptation and, you know, spending and, yeah. So, uh, yeah. they And they have, like, this on-the-spot ceremony. They do something that looks like Omiba Tai Chi. And they hand it over to you very, very rel- uh, reverently. Now, these guys must respect the Jedi Order. They know they're the Jedi Academy, and they maybe see everything that's junk here as holy junk. Maybe they are like believe in the Force. Now, they do have their own secular religion that I hinted at with your quasi-good galactic roles, but it's not like we're bending a knee over something from a flea market. This is Jedi-grade equipment, whether it's actual holocrom or just a data cube, you're not sure, but you know they're, they're you know, paying the respect. Okay. So I'll just take my data pad out, okay. do a tally of the expenses so far. Okay. Now the squib, on the other hand, right? The the <coughs> non-religious little dudes, they just pulled a, a broken lights out of the pocket. Went, yep, yeah, everyone's got one of these, you know, it's a trophy that type of thing. Very contrast, you know. Not that you got are upset that they have it, but you know what I'm saying, like di- quite a different view. So, um, we've come to an accord. You guys hand over seven A. They hand over 7A, you get the money, and you give the yep. squib a suit, okay? Um, yep. Perhaps feeling a little bit overdone or overshadowed by the Uggar, okay? Little squibs also throw in a net so that you can carry your half droid around on your back, which I think is a total nod to Empire. Yep, <laughs> yep, totally is. They throw in a net for free so you can strap them on the back of somebody. So... Who's going to have a 7A backpack? Got to know. Tell me now. Well, gentlemen, I have to say, thanks for your assistance, and it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Okay. Actually, um... Who is going to carry... Yeah, I'll, I'll address the Jimmy... Or, uh, Jimmy specifically. With <laughs> the, the squibs. The Jimmies. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all look like Jimmy Sorry. to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then like. while he's <laughs> he's doing his socializing, I'll net up the droid and, and okay. hand it over to, uh... 
to oh, well, access. I, I was going to argue on the net, like I was going to try and barter on the net, because we don't need a net. Huh? I have plenty of synth rope and chain that we can use to tie up. Well, they're throwing the net in for free to be a good sport. Well, yeah, right, for free. right, I want them to toss in the lightsaber. Okay, we <laughs> just get, we just gave you a net. If you want a barter, that means you're going to give us like something more for the net. So if you want to, oh, you're just trying to get the lightsaber out of them. Well, I, I'm trying to swap the net for the lightsaber and <laughs> toss in a little bit extra, you know, how, as compensation. How are you guys going to hold up your droid with one of these? And he slaps Buddy and he pulls it out again. Spark, spark. You, you're probably going to need the net. I, I have things that we can use to strap it to the droid. Anyway, anyway, they smile at each other sideways. They go, well, if you really want it, what else have you got? How much have you got on you? <laughs> kind of like... The squibs just watch five grand go f to their, you know, rivals. It's like, so, you know, you guys like holocrons? They know what this is. So well, what you got for this? You know, the squibs just kind of do the rubbing of the hands. Sure. We'll give it to you. Uh, I have 200 for you. That's probably the best you're going to get for something that can't be repaired by anybody that exists in the galaxy anymore. We don't, we don't care if it's repaired if we're giving it to you. What I'm meaning is there's no one that's going to pay for it because no one's going to be able to fix it and use it. Oh, sure. All it needs, and he just starts rambling on how they think they could fix it. And they, because it actually is a mechanical component, they could get it working, but not like a real Jedi with the crystal and the harmony or whatever. But they could get this thing to fire because you're just running the current through the crystal. It might not be stable. It actually might be very dangerous. But technically, they start rambling on about, oh, yeah, we just fired up through this, blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. Uh, but they're not idiots. They also know that running a current through this crystal without whatever secrets you guys do is pretty much asking to hold up a... It's a torch. It's a torch. It's a bomb. <laughs> oh, that's... It. So they've left it broken. But yeah. following the argument... Um, like, so you know, I'm going to make a persuasion check along with that. Okay. Um, and due to one of my talents, I can use my use the force check instead of persuasion check. Okay. I also take a perception from you up front. Perception as well? Yep. No, righty. Not a lightsaber. It's just a sparky stick. <laughs> uh, perception of 18. They seem to take anything you say literally and lock onto it. So because your, because your grand opening barter was no one can fix it, and they just went, sure we can. But they know the danger is what I'm saying. It's like, you know, deflating yeah. the argument. Anyway, use the Force 26 for, sorry, what was your angle there? Uh, per, that is use in place of my persuasion check. Oh, so 26 persuasion. Are you are you literally like running two fingers across the space of the air? That kind of thing? No, it's due to my talent, I can substitute my use the force modifier as my persuasion modifier. Okay. So this is oh. not mind trick. This is correct. No, but you are using this is a talent. If you can use the force to perceive instead of using your eyes, you are still making yourself look shiny or, you know, pulling whatever out of the air you know you're still using the force anyway it's not no. it's not a it, it doesn't say so anywhere in the write-up uh I yeah can give you exact just a page substitution number. dude you're literally using the force skill instead of something else which means you are right. you, it, you but are it's not mind trick no it's, yeah, it's but not he, but he he could be using the force to intuitively sense the right thing sure. to say to them to convince that's, them you know what that's I mean? what i just said you make yourself look shiny or lean out anyway yeah uh but you're not using the force it's not a sense thing like you're not trying to get information so it, sh no. it shouldn't be blocked so you shouldn't have a problem okay okay you guys are just jumping like i do a big build up but i'm i'm trying to compartmentalize and precedent as we do the stuff please don't take everything i say as a build up to a big no Okay, which is what I'm sensing, because I can still sense. I'm not blocked. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, uh, 26 Persuade, and you want to go with 200 and... Uh, uh, 200 and swap the net for the broken lightsaber. So we get our net back. You're going to carry the droid, but you'd rather have the saber and 200? Well, and give them 200. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like they're like say they're like no. they discuss it, you know, and you waft your force yeah. pheromones and they're like, done. <laughs> they go over and snatch the net off the droid. Yoink. <laughs> Andrew, here you go. One broken lightsaber. Enjoy your new droid. Alrighty. 
I'll pull out the, some synth rope and chain and start lashing up okay. and put that away in my bag. Okay. It's a project for later. Thank you, Master Jedi. And he doesn't mean that you're a Master Jedi. It's, you know, the protocol terminology of politely calling you Master Jedi. You know, that kind of thing. It's like saying Young Jedi or, you know, Master Bob. That kind of thing. Just so we're clear. Gotcha. However, the droid doesn't start addressing you because I saw that shit too. Right? Fair. Young Master Jedi. You know, thank you, Young Master Jedi. Well, of course. You seem to have knowledge of the place, so if nothing else, you'll be useful. Yes. But if you were you know, a part of the Jedi Order and helping out, then I personally want you around. Of course. Anyway, the arms start, like, making the train motion, and he's like, please help, I can't get up. <laughs> he tries to, <laughs> starts wobbling around his elbows. Right? Where did you leave your legs? I believe they have been crushed under the rubble. I managed to crawl into the clear before I met these... And he quietly says, beings. Racist. Hey, shit happens. Sith happens. And he's <laughs> just this little talking along. I want to do the creepy, like, Freddy Krueger with, like, the little elbows on all fours running across the floor. Just creepy as hell. But he just kind of, like, you know, plants an elbow, drag. Plants an elbow, drag. Well, I'll, I'll pick him up and lash him up to our droid, to TL. He looks like a street... That's going to be close. That's going to be... How how much does he weigh? A protocol droid? Or part of a protocol ha droid. Half a part? He doesn't half have legs. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure anyone could carry him. The net would just make him, like, back, okay. backpackable, so... Okay. Um. Anyway, you said something about synth rope, so you just want to just, you, like, engage the jello, the gel, have it harden in instant rope, and just tie him to something or make him an actual vest that someone can lift with a handle out of said rope? Yeah. Okay. So, all that said and done, Jedi does his little rope trick. Uh, Jedi rope trick. Get it? Uh, <laughs> if we do some sort of backpack, I can carry it. It's a second level belt. Yeah, okay. We just put him on the hook that's on your collarbone. <laughs> that's welded there. There's that ridge, and they just loop it over like your coat rack. There you go. Okay, so... 7A is now the two-faced back, you know, some kind of Greek god of XL. We have killing on the front and protocol on the, on the diplomacy on the back. He's like a, <laughs> he's like a bad hairdo, right? It's party uh, before we part ways with these aliens, I'm going to spend a bit of time gathering any information I can find out about any other sure. salvage dudes that are around. Yeah, yeah. If they've, if they've heard of the Jedi. Ooh, natural one for 12. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they, uh, you know, they, they happily start, we all, all start chatting and, and while you're talking to them, you know, the guys are getting the rope going and this type of thing. And uh, anyway, they're, they're either confused with your crappy 12 of like what you want to know, or they just don't know, or they, or what they know is they don't believe that's what you're asking, you know, from such crappy role. But then may I have perception from all and I'll even give our droid a plus five bonus. Twelve. Why? Uh, Why? Because because you have a droid strapped to your back. You're literally watching. You're constantly watching in two different directions. And since XL is always like guns, watching everyone saying nothing, I would think he's a little bit more eyes on the horizon, eyes on you. What are you doing? What, like the pair. Gives me a fourteen. Okay. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, I rolled really bad. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's okay. Apparently, I'm very much aware yeah. of my surroundings today. With oh, a thirty, yes. wizard with the eyes, he's like, yeah. ah, I see you." Yeah. Ka -ka. Finding the droid stuck to your back, not a bit of a handicap, and uh, you know, distracting. It's Leth who's just casually noticed the large black lizards that have. Oh, look at that! I believe that's a pincer maneuver. They've already closed around our position as they begin to reveal themselves round well, one that's your chance jedi make fun make friends with the animals yeah make and we can ride around the planet on them just like the movies come on go 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 uh, <laughs> uh, the, no we don't do that with these <laughs> round one left gets to act and we our action is emerging you know getting up on to like stepping up on stuff you know we see picture a big panther with a lizard head these things are black sleek muscular and they give you a 
bit of the willies because they're creepy looking Rahal and they definitely give you a bad bad feeling young master Jedi and I will reveal them to you now and go to the old GM lair and go whoop let's bring everyone to tokens Pachoom. hi there Oh, four. That's offensive maneuver. <laughs> Sneaking across the rubble. Guess what was watching us? Oh, left you know those eyes. Now they have faces and claws and massive tails. These things look rather dangerous. And they are all large sized. It's time for initiative, please. Let me pull up my tracker. Let me switch to a battle board. Some exciting battle music. Ooh. 21.1. Maha. Ah, crap, I didn't have my dude select. Yeah, I guess I did. Probably because probably I haven't uh, cleared these. Maybe? Oh, it didn't work for me either. Oh, spe Spectre's oh, out here on the battle map, eh, Jeff? What? Spectre's on the map. Why is she on the map? I don't, I don't know. know. Oh! <laughs> She's been here the whole time, oh, secretly yeah. listening to everything we've said. That would be something you could just say, hey, dude, you probably had her hiding on the GM layer in case Sam showed up playing tonight. And, you know, that would have gone into the chat and Zoom. <laughs> Call I me did a... send it to chat. Yeah, he did he a long time ago, out. actually. Where? So, uh, I saw no Zoom. Shame, shame, <laughs> Mr. GM. You, you know what I see? I see a whole bunch of chat like you guys are talking in the game chat. Breath mass provide one hour. I was like, stop talking in the Zoom. Fine. My bad. No editing. I'm going to own it. I'm not even going to edit out this faux pas of mine. I still think you share blame and, and shame. Anyway, what Spectra? I don't see Yeah, he said it at exactly 10.35 p.m. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Did I mention Rahul gets oh, a minus? Oh, that bounced off the so 20 cool. there. I saw that. What'd you get? Poser? Uh, so I first had gotten a 21, but using my, uh, you know, my racial ability that allows me to reroll initiatives... Uh, but I have to take the second roll. I rolled again. I got a 22. Hey, it's better, man. Higher. It's better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's better. Okay. XLS? What'd you get? I rolled a 16. 16. And Dr. Leth? I have a 25. And I got a 21. You got a 20? 21. 21. 21. Yeah, I got you in that. Okay. So, surprise round. Unless this game doesn't have it, pretty sure. Dr. Leth and the baddies. We emerge. Dr. Leth can do something. What do you wish to do, Dr. Leth, on your own? Um... Well, I suppose I would like to move over towards, with my back towards the um, the statue here and say, ah, I believe we found out what the eyes were. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, would it be an actual action to call up knowledge to see if I know anything about these creatures at sight or? Uh, possibly a swift, but uh, go ahead. You gonna want to, you want to do the galactic lore? Go nuts! I would have to I would have to argue, yeah, because it's not just one world D and D, and the you, you you know what a troll is. There are multiple worlds of similar. You know what I mean? You'd have to watch mm -hmm. how they move, how they. You know what I'm saying? So it's got to be. Hmm. Anyway. All right. In that, uh, if that's the case, then I will save that role for later. Well, I'm going to say, anything you knowing up front that you can quickly... Because, like I said, a lot of battles are first couple rounds, right? You don't want to like, oh, we're losing! Well, they are quadrupeds, so they could jump farther than you'd expect. Like that one! <laughs> you know, like... You don't want to... Like, wow. You know, knowledge is power. Yeah, so... Swift I did, action. Thank you. I did still want to move out of the way, so... Okay, so as a move action, you move. you got two actions left. You can spend a swift to know something, and two swifts if you want to know crap done. Ah. Um... 
Sure. I don't necessarily want to make the first shot, so I'll spend two swifts to know a fair deal. Okay. Uh, sorry. I guess it would be a swift galactic lore, because there's like one roll. You don't like read all the same lore, but if you give me a perception, mm -hmm. you know, picking out detail, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, be damn sure you know what you're looking at. Don't mistake it for I mean, does else. my 30 from earlier not count? Yeah, you see them. They emerge. You see them hiding. Right now we emerge, we start moving, we start acting, we're attacking, and you're studying them. Sure, the perception of 20. Okay. Um, they have uh, a pack mentality. There should be an alpha. Not that if you kill him, they'll all go away, but there's definitely going to be like an alpha in this pack, and they are acting like a pack. It's not one for all, and they're all like clipping at you like... You know, like hyenas or whatever. They have this sort of wolf pack. They've closed. They've stealth. They've got a better ground. Now they reveal themselves. There's an alpha that you probably got to watch out for. Probably be the largest one or the fastest one. Um, that being said, this creature, they are quadrupeds. They are uh, reptilian. And where are we here? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they have uh, slight slashing gills, so they're probably aquatic. So they're possibly a water source or they're amphibian. Um, the musk on their eyes and the way they're moving is they're probably, I wouldn't say nocturnal, but these things are probably good hunters at night. You know, like a low light vision, not really dark vision, okay? Their scales um, look almost like armor. You know what I mean? They have, they, these things look like they have thick rhino skin. These don't look like a gator where you could just slip a knife in and be good. These things look, you know, heavily scaled. Um, remember like those dogs on uh, Riddick that glowed red? Mm. You take a puppy and it's like, that's some serious scaled four-legged thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, right? Um, but the biggest thing I can tell you about this that's a giveaway as they move into strike is they open their mouths but not to like bare teeth. They open their mouths and they probe the air with their tongue, which would hint at either uh, it's their own perception, smell, taste like a snake, or perhaps they even have parenchyal tongues that could lash out at you. Anyway, all this races through your brain, and at the end of the round, you just start what? Just shouting at your buddy, going, "Oh, you know what? A pack of dark." It's heavily scaled lizards watch for the tongue there's an alpha you know like what could you train it like all that thought process everything the time stops and elf and left just starts going through books and his happy hologram dancing through his mind right all this information comes flooding into your mind through perception pack of yeah. pack of aquatic four-legged lizard like creatures likely heavily armored and possibly with the way they've got their mouths opened that probably uses the tongue as a weapon or at the very least, perception. So expect something at range. That was like three rounds, like 18 seconds. <laughs> Can you shorten it? Long lashing uh, tongues, heavily armored skin, like, you know, like just shorten it up. But he can't. Actually, that's part of less charm, right? He just starts lecturing you guys. <laughs> anyway. I would be kind of talking at them as they do their things, so. Yeah. Sure. So as soon as your brain registers it as confirmation, you just start spurting it out. All right. Yep. So I'll be kind that you're prattling. Anyway, so we're all talking. We're all doing this thing. You guys are like, hey, let's learn about the galaxy. Like I said, you guys are all engaged in actions. And these things emerge. Less sees them. And all of a sudden, Lush kind of steps forward towards them. So it actually breaks everyone's eye line. Tucks his back against that statue and just starts going, dark lizards, long tongues. Be What are you talking about, dude? And he's pointing around us. So you all quickly get the idea that we are surrounded. Anyway, they use their round to get into position where you see them now. So entering, you know, round two, as it were, starting at the top of the order. You guys all like, you already, most of you have weapons out. Um, top of the order is also left. So you've moved, you've warned everybody, everyone's reacting. Oh no, you know, what do you want to do left? Um, I would take the time to see if I can identify which would be the alpha. Okay. Hmm. I would go with Galactic Lore once more. Actually, no, I would go with Perception because you're trying to judge. Like, you already have the lore in your head. 
Sorry. All right. Oh, well, uh, then perception is plus 11, so that's 22. Oh, keeping the same dice roll, you mean? Fair enough. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. I did kind of flip it on you at the last minute. My bad. Um, yes. Uh, to the south, the purple one. Because there are three that have a nice tight ring, and the biggest one is in the best position to do overwatch as well as, you know, literally have a good, like the best strike because you guys were clustered. You know what I mean? Rahal, Alpha is probably directly behind you. <laughs> Our non combatant player. Not on purpose, Matt, I assure you. Let's put him there, not me. Could have been any color. Could have been the blue panther. Could have been the green panther lizard. He could have been the you know. Blame <laughs> blame no, Jay and Doctor Leth, panther. right? There would there would have been Perfect you know panther. if if Leth hadn't asked, they've all would have been generic. There might have not have even you might have even not even known there was a you know. Gee, this one's tough. He's not going down so fast. You know, it's all perception, right? Anyway, yep. Doctor Leth, you're pointing out to Rahal. No, the alpha fear of the alpha but uh, what else do you want to do we'll say it's a swift get his attention hey you uh and then from there i will crouch down to make myself a smaller target okay uh if these things have presential tongues that's a range attack that is good if these things jump on you you're going practically prone you're giving them bonuses that is bad i don't want to go prone i'd like to kind of go down into a crouch on my on my legs okay get low lower that center of balance yep fair enough and uh and my weapon is already drawn okay. but i believe that was a standard and is there fighting defensively in this because that's what i'd have to call it right uh, that's a good question well it's, uh, it, it, i believe so yes because it, it, instead of like there's definitely fighting defensively but that's a standard action to fight defensively it's a well, specific it, action in combat. yeah but he, it has it, to be a standard action to make a melee attack he, he says i want to get down but i'm not going prone so without those penalty or bonuses what else could i and give like him taking but, cover yeah i could give him a cover bonus or yeah cover. actually yeah i would go with cover that's a good call thank you doug yeah, so you're you're taking cover, like you're getting small in the yeah. shadow of the statue. That that works good. I like that. Thank you. Okay, so taking cover in the statue, and you're good. Yes. That I think is all the actions I can take for now. All right. Let me just widen the board a little bit here, so that everyone can see every single menacing, terrible, death on a stick creature coming at you here. Right. On a stick. On a stick. It's a dark lizard on a stick. All right. Uh, next we have Poser. <gasps> Damn, you lost your... You were like top of for so many seasons, dude. What's you slipping? And I just rolled poorly. I don't know. It happens. Change the robe, wardrobe and I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm getting away from the heavy metal and clearly that's showing that that's the wrong idea. I need to go back into Poser. You get me back on top. <laughs> uh, anywho. Um, so I will move action, draw the vibro axe and standard action, use a force power on the red creature. I'm going to be using mind shard. So against will defense. Um, a 26 use the force. Okay. Uh, sorry, which one? Uh, the red one. Okay, so to paint a picture, imagine going uh, an empty stone floor. Okay, let's paint a wall of rubble on a compass point that starts at the point of north, but is not covering all of north. It's just half and it sweeps around like someone's take your foot in the sand at the north compass and drag your foot in the sand in an arc left to right from the north compass all the way around sweeping south all the way up to like east but you go flat out with east and that is your rubble pile that you've swept in the sand on top of a flat stone floor and then pick up a giant chest piece and almost at the center of this compass point where all the lines in your head are intersecting for said compass just left or west of the center we're going to drop a big statue then we're going to cluster all the heroes us on the south of this one rock he lifted and our new friends on the north all 
close to the center tide of this compass, it's completely surrounded by rubble and debris. And we have open spaces of no more than really four or five squares veeing off in any direction before we hit solid rubble. Then in a pincer formation, to the north, on top of the rubble, to the right, big, large, four-square creature. I've denoted them as a red, a blue, a green, and a purple as they are spotted around. At anchor points, on top of the edge of the rubble, emerging with a little bit of higher ground, we have these big, ten-foot, black, heavily armored scaled lizards with tongues. And they're just evenly spaced in sort of a semicircle opposite the statue. Poser is dead center, turns leaning back over his rock and targets the northernmost, I want to call it panther because I use panther minis, but the northernmost lizard and hits it with the big shard. And that goes against my will? Yes, your will defense. Okay. And do you get bonuses for hitting it more than 510? Uh, no. So automatically you are moved one step down the condition track. And because I beat DC 25, you will take four die, eight points of damage. Okay, let's have it. Ooh, 21. Ow. Okay. And if that beats your threshold, then you'll drop down an additional one on the condition track. My threshold has been beaten, and Dark Lizard number one, or shall we say Red Dark Lizard, Red leader, gold leader. Red dark. So does that mean he goes three steps down the condition track? Two. Two. What? Well, it doesn't going down your threshold no, put you down no, a he, step on the he, condition he puts track? You down one. One for, one for damage. Then he starts yeah. going down the additional track as a little bonus for the high roll, beating right, 25. Right. But does, does the force threshold. ability not push him down one to begin with? Yes. Okay, so the force ability pushes one. Then damage occurs, which pushes down a second. That's it. Be that's it? Because the damage hit my threshold, which always pushes anyone down. That's yeah. yeah that's which is two. Yes. That's sweet. Yeah. But he Also you can't improve your condition until the end of my next turn. And also if it was planning the on. only reason he actually started messing with my condition track at all was because he hit twenty five, right? Otherwise it'd just be damage. He used the force so well with a big fat roll, it added condition track. No, I think the damage no, dice is what condition it is. Yeah, so the one step down the condition track always occurs, and then base, if DC 15 and will defense are beaten, then it's two die eight. Oh, the dam In okay, the damage goes up because yeah, of the dice. the damage oh, okay, dice sorry. scales up. Add that backwards. All right, so um, 21 points of damage to me. Ouch, done. You beat my threshold, and I am at negative two. Anything else, sir? Uh, move action to have the axe out, and that's it. Okay. Next, we have us, the bad guys. And these suckers, as a move action, how long is my tongue? Do, do, do. As a move action, we've got one comes forward a bit here, one comes forward a bit here. One comes forward. They just, they pretty much just come like one square closer to line up targets and out starts come. Okay. This one guy is going to move in a bit. Um, what, uh, what, uh, just out of curiosity, cause I, mm -hmm. poser was 22 and I was 21. So are they 21 as well? No, they're 22. Oh, 22 as well. Yeah. Ooh. I just, I just, you know, tie favor the player kind of thing. Oh, ah, well, nice. also I think my initiative modifier probably beats theirs because i get huge bonuses yeah our me. dex is like 14 and then the elf is a little yeah. better yeah so i just aired on the side of poser or caution as well okay. okay yeah so they all close in and out come the tongues so one lashes at rahal purple green lashes at tx t h t s x t uh t l x s yeah thank you total excess total, total excess uh blue goes for oh that sorry i got a little closer here um blue comes up here blue goes for poser and the red one up top goes for one of the uggars so i'll give this uggar a red dot so we know he's his target actually probably give everyone a dot corresponding with who's got their tongue coming at you it just makes things easier so you know who's who's oh, that's kind of cool who's who's on you right right okay so a whole bunch of tongue lashing so First, because these guys have separate stats, 
our regular lizards, semicircle from the top, one, two, three. Um, go bum, bum, bum. And we go with tongue lashing, two square range. Out comes the tongue. Oof. Prehensile tongue. Nah. Hmm. I have attacks for everything but my tongue. Where the hell is it? That's strange. Do we have to listen to them give us a tongue lashing? Well, I have biting attacks, I have clawing attacks, but I don't actually have my... Oh, here it is. Got it. Okay. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Okay, so starting at the top with our Udgar, we're going to go... Give him a nice fat modifier here. Dun, dun, dun. Now the top guy is the guy that took penalties. So he's actually down two to hit. Noted. Thank you, Poser. Top guy lashing at Udgar with 11 and misses. Fresh guy. Sorry, fresh dark lizard blue lashing at Poser himself with a 28. Uh, yeah, that hits. Okay. And a target hit by a prehensile tongue attack is grabbed and must succeed on an opposed grapple check. If you fail, you are pulled to the nearest open square adjacent the Dark Lizard. The parental tongue can reach two squares. Uh, 11 on my grapple check, I'm pretty sure I lose. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a plus four, a 14 actually to grapple. Yeah. But uh, natural, well, natural, uh, one, natural, natural one. one could be a fail. Yeah, we're gonna roll. Unless you wanna use that force point, or maybe we'd like to reach out to the net because I've got four juicy points sitting from. Eh, I, I'm okay with being pulled in. Okay. So can it reach from there? Does it not have to be one space? Because you said two. it's two squares, yeah, right? Yeah, two squares. So from the edge of my guy, one, two, there's Poser. Oh, I see. There's three to Poser. Sorry, sorry. I had these. I had these guys close to his two square range, but I'm thinking like two away. So, like I said, with lots of movement to spare, they all would just close. Yep. Anyway, and I yank Poser over to me. Hi, how's it going? Base to base. Yeah. Hey. No, I've got these. I, uh... I got these panthers backwards because the tails are supposed to be the tongues, right? They're not just backing up to you uh -huh. going, look at me, I'm the cat. Look at, uh, look at me. That's uh, funny. I didn't even notice that until you pointed it out. It's just like, what is this thing doing? It, it's... <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to see the back? It's, it's like a freaking cat. backing up yeah. menacingly. It's a freaking cat, right? Uh, next we have, so Poser gets grabbed by tongue and yanked close. Uh, next we have one going for TLXS. With a 24. That does not hit me. Okay. So this thing reaches out and grabs a leg, gives a yank, and it's just like, ugh, metal. <laughs> you just kind of shake it off. And last but not least, our fearless leader. Oh, you know what? Let me talk to Alpha here. Possibly I have a better, yes, I do. I have a plus 14. So that's actually a 22, Rahal. Oh, that does hit. So sorry. Yoink! <laughs> so I have to succeed in an opposing grapple attack? Or I'm going to move you over there. Great. Where's grapple? Here's my grapple. Well, grapple at 34. Natural 20. Where's grapple? There it is. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh, <laughs> Just wrapped. He's literally nope. he's literally 12. right behind Rahal. You have that tongue and you look around. It's like, ooh, I have a new belt. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Pulls you all the way back. Anyway. Um, now, some might be mean, but I'm thinking, like, that's a lot going on. I moved. I lashed, I yoinked, pretty sure he's done. I'm not going to get into a bunch of automatic bites and stuff because it just talks about hitting you with the tongue, pulling you in. So here you are. I have my tongue around you, and you're, I wouldn't say face-to-face, -face, but you are, you know, adjacent to the baddies. That's us. Rahal, what do you do? You still have a weapon out because, like I said, it doesn't like you automatically drop a weapon. Yeah, I'm going to take aim and fire. Shoot him in the face. Shoot him in the Shoot face. him in the tongue. Shoot him in the tongue. <laughs> All right, click of this. And why did that not hurt? Rahal shooting, oh, XLS, yes. you're on deck. And, oh, point blank shot kicks in for that bad boy, so we get a plus one on that, don't I? Okay. Submitto. Uh, 17. 17 against the Alpha, lucky you. No, sir. 
Ah. Push point. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will back that by saying you are close. It's at 17. You are within six, sir. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Three. 20. You don't want to end up like the guy that got eaten by the guys on, uh, was it the big frog eat the hippie guy on, uh, Futurama, this isn't happening. You don't want to be at that point where you start going, you know what, I'm going to use a force play. Like, <laughs> Yeah, no, I used it. Uh, Brings us to... To bring up to 20. Which is just enough to hit me. Pew! Yes, for 18 points of damage. 18 against the alpha, no less. Right in the mouth. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, I think that's all I can do, isn't yeah. it? Because I probably can't move. I'm I'm grabbed, right? Now, you yourself can actually impose a... Well, if you use your kind of standard. You can use a standard to, like, you know, I want to get away. I want to free myself, and you start grappling. You know what I mean? We don't just have yeah. to grapple on my turn. You can go, well, I grapple back and try and break free, but you decide to shoot him instead. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to stick with that shooting. Okay, which brings us to TLX as... What do you want to do, sir? I am going to use my grenade launcher to fire a concussion grenade uh, centered right here. And that does a two square radius. So it does a T shape. So it's it's four across and four across. Okay. And, uh, can, can you draw the T with your... Uh... Let me see. Yeah, let me do. Let me. You should, you should have like a freehand draw. Yeah, like, if I can do the freehand it's not, draw. It's, you know, yeah. it's not anyone let draw my maps, by the way. So, if you're gentle with your the, grenade. The privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Any grenade launcher gets you this privilege. Okay. It so, does. So that lobbing a nice grenade, which is going to cover the bottom half of one large creature four squares and the top right corner of a, a second. So basically, you're going in between two baddies to catch two in a blast, and our guys are free. Right. Right, and I nice target idea. AC 10. Yep. And... Now, here's my question. You have two weapons out, right? The grenade launcher is mounted to the top of my blast tech rifle. Okay. And what's in the other one? So, a heavy blaster a heavy blaster pistol. Okay. Got it. Off we go. Boop. 23. Hit. It's AC 10 or reflex 10 for 36 points of damage. Yep. Um, so beating our reflex. Oh, sorry. Plant, damage sorry, special. sorry, sorry. Planting, planting it where you want. You get it there, right? We get caught right. in the blast. Right. And if it hits their reflex defense, they take full, not half. Right. So you only need 10 to get where you want it, but the 23 is against our reflex to see if we jump out of the way kind of thing. Anyway, you hit both of ours with change. Great. So we actually both Great. take 36 points of what kind of damage we're talking here? Uh, that's bludgeoning. Okay. It's actually, as you can see, I've added it in there. So you, it shows when I roll it. Okay. Oh, right. Concussion. Ba boom. Right. Squishes our squishes our scaly fur, as it were, and and, and scrambles our brains as so we start bleeding out our ears with thirty six points of damage. Jeez, man. Anyway, that also exceeds our threshold, so we go each go down the track one. Right. And then I'll make a persuasion check to make myself the most tempting target. Okay. You all smell bad, and your mother dresses you funny. So what are the conditions on this? For, um... Do I need to be able to think and speak a language? Fire. You can distract opponents if I can convince them that I'm the most tempting. I make a swift action to per persuasion check against the will defense of opponents in line of sight. Um, okay. It, does not say anything about you know what i've seen how many times opponent. in star wars has somebody run out in front of a big weird gothola thing and go hey charge at me beastie look at me and you moon them and it, the creature goes yum comes at you so i'm pretty sure it's universal you make yourself look delicious or threatening or whatever because we do have body language you know what i mean these are predators so yep. if you make yourself look like the biggest threat predator or prey then yeah, it's still you know, and it's against our how are we perceiving you, so it should be okay. I don't think it's language based if it's not if it doesn't specifically say you're talking to it. 
right? It just says convince. So, yeah, I'll let you have it. Beasties and people. If the look. check exceeds an opponent's will defense. Yes, sir. That opponent, any of them, yep. cannot attack any character within six squares of me, of any of my allies, okay. until the start of my next turn. If I don't, is uh, cover is irrelevant at the moment. Okay. As long as I don't have cover to them. Okay. So they can't target anybody but me. They could do an area attack and attack all of us, but. Okay. One, and... in, one in the hand is two in the bush. So I'm going to give this guy a plus five to his will, taking him from 11 to 16, because I have a poser in my tongue maybe even okay. 10. However, you are so delicious and shiny with your 28. Like just so we're covered, like I don't just immediately like stupidly mm -hmm. drop poser who I have in my clutches and go for you. Okay. This thing is a will of 11, even giving a plus 10 going, I could just totally bite this guy. He's squishy. He's delicious. Like oh, I have never seen this, you know, you just fold and make yourself look like, I don't know, something. He's well, that's also the one on a Rahal and the one that's on the dude up there too. Everything within six squares of six. You. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the poser one, right. And our Rahal now the Rahal one. Oh. Okay. Uh, that's a different ball game. Alpha has completely different oh, sets. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so on their action, the we one in the Northeast is too, uh, my, the ally is too far away. So you're right. He's the, the uh, back it's, it's allies. So you go to the dude. Oh, okay. So you'd hit him. And if he's within C7, so I can't protect him. But that's okay because he's not. In yeah, the the, be the beast. The well, the beast doesn't have to be within six squares. It's like I'm the no, taste. My allies, I'm the yeah. tastiest looking thing in this pat in this herd, right? Right. And and uh, Leth, just so we you're you're kind of dead center now with Poser, right? Poser's off to your right, two away. Leth is behind you, two away. Rahal is three away, but still, like, yeah, that's a that's a good spread. Okay. Yeah. He just doesn't cover the uh, the Uggars. Yeah. Right. I cover one of them, maybe. Right. Or, uh, but yeah, they're no. both so seven they're away. They're both seven. Tong okay. Tongue's wrapped around two of our allies, and everything closing in. He does his little thing, and you see three heads all turn. Huh? Round three. And we'll see you next time on <laughs> We <Ouch>. Shot First. <laughs> Sorry. Ending the round, you know. Well, you know, technically we can't let go until it's our turn, you see. But, That's right. But way to burn That's a swift true. way to burn my swift action too, man. Hate destroyed. Say goodnight, TLX. Yes, yes, well played, sir. Yeah. Good night, TLXS. I see what you did there. And I like it.